thrilling story of Peyton Blake. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Tonight, Hannah Cord has taken a long walk. Her destination, the office of Stephen Cord. She must see the young man who lived all of his life assuming that she was his mother. Hannah tried desperately to prevent Stephen from gaining the knowledge that he was the son of Catherine Payton. And now she knows she must confront Stephen, perhaps for the last time. May I come in? Well, I was just on my way home. I'm leaving tonight. I'd like to say goodbye. Sit down. Thank you. What are you going to do now? Travel. Then travel some more. I... I'd like life to be simple for a while. Live out of suitcases, sleep in hotel rooms, eat meals that I haven't planned. I, I want my life to be my own for a while, my own plans, my own schedule. I'm really a little tired of being a custodian of Martin Payton's possessions. Oh, it'll be difficult. It may even be a little frightening for a while after all the years of familiar faces, familiar routines, but it's, it's what I want to do. Stephen, I just want what to... What you said on the witness stand. It's over. It's really unimportant. But I'd like to have the satisfaction of knowing the truth. And when you said you saw Lee Weber push Ann Howard off the bluff, you were lying, weren't you? After all the years I had to lie to you, Stephen. I don't have to lie anymore. Now, you were very upset on that witness stand. I could very well understand if you said it out of confused desperation. I wish it weren't true, Stephen. Believe me, but I wish with all my heart I hadn't seen it happen. But I did. Do you really expect me to believe that? It would be difficult for you. Difficult? It's impossible. Stephen, you always did hate so blindly, so absolutely. Even as a little boy, you... I don't want to hear your recollections of my childhood. No, I don't suppose you do. But, Stephen, please try to believe me now. If there's anything that I owe you, if there is anything that I can give you now, it's the truth. I will never believe that you saw Lee Weber murder Anne. All right. You always were adamant. Even as a little boy, if... If anyone was nice to you just once, you loved them forever, no matter what they did to you after that. If anyone hurt you just once, you hated them so much, so fiercely, that you hated them forever, that you were suspicious of them forever. Well, I think it's fair to say that I'm to blame for that. It's my fault that you were so starved for love, so vulnerable to pain. But, Stephen, please don't let yourself be like that now. I've earned your hate. All right, I accept that. But don't let your hatred for me blind you to the fact that you... You've made it possible for a guilty man to go free. Sooner or later, you have to face that. This is your farewell present to me, isn't it? You didn't come here to say goodbye. You came here to give me something to live with for the rest of my life. Now, that's a very touching present. Very sweet. Only you could think of such a thing. You still know how to hurt me, don't you, Steve? Believe me, I did not come here to tell you that, but it's the truth. I swear it. All right. I'll live with it. I will live with my mistakes. Forgive me. I am sorry. You know, I wondered if you were going to come to see me before you left. I wanted to say goodbye to you, but I couldn't come to you. Now, try to understand. I wish I could put my arms around you and love you for what you tried to do, but I can't. 
It was a lie. You tried to be my mother. I thought you were my mother. I needed you and depended on you and wanted you to smile and hold me and love me. Now, even though it was a lie, if it wasn't for you, I, I wouldn't have had anyone. What is your crime? You know, I've asked myself over and over. Pretending to be my mother, taking care of me, seeing that I was well fed and well clothed and brushed my teeth and didn't get sick and said my prayers before I went to bed. Yeah, what, uh, what should be your punishment for, for making me do my homework and, and seeing that I had good manners and didn't think money grew on trees and, and went to a good college? I don't know what I would have done without you, being there, without your help. Now, I know that in my mind and in my head. And I know it doesn't cost anything to love someone, but I, I can't, Mother. It's going to take me a long time before I'll be able to stop using the word mother. When I speak to you, I think about you. Rachel Wells. Hello, Miss Wells. Uh, pleased to meet you, Miss Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> We've come for these books, medical books. Dr. Rossi made up the list for me. You know where the index cards are, Mr. Carson? Well, I, uh... You'll find the books listed alphabetically by title on the left-hand side, cross-indexed by author, subject matter on the right-hand side. Thank you, Miss Hunt. Is this what she means? supposed to do you're sleeping at home young man this is my first trip to real public library norman <sighs> heredity heredity i never knew about that it's a long story and rachel needs some help and you're just the fellow to help her yes dr rossi made a list of books for me to read so i could learn more about medicine and i have a lot of homework you know, Don, well, you aren't going to do any homework or anything else until you crawl out of this pit you've been sulking in. I don't want to argue, Mr. Carson. Nothing's going to change your heredity. All you can do is improve it. Like I did when I grew my mustache. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how long the longest mustache in the world is, Norman? It's 102 inches. You yeah. think of that? <laughs> the fellow knew you grew it. it was so long he had to have a man walk on either side so he wouldn't trip over it and pull off his upper... <laughs> You two have been reading the same bubblegum comics, haven't you? No, it's from the Farmer's Almanac. Oh. Basic zoology, the beginnings of biology, the story of the human cell, a handbook of anatomy. What are you going to read stuff like this Quit for? your blethering and go fetch the books. Go on now, go on. And you, go and watch what he does. I want you to get a lot of good out of this place for all the taxes I've been paying over the years. Go on now. Miss Hunt, the lady at the desk. The librarian. Oh, yes. Well, the librarian. 
librarian said that we should look in the index cards because the books are listed alphabetically. That's for amateurs. Oh. Why does Dr. Rossi want you to read all this stuff? So I can catch up. With what? Well, medicine and science and things about the body, you know. Yeah, why? Do you want to be a cell phone like Dr. Rossi? I don't think I ever could be a doctor, but if I study hard and learn a lot, well, then maybe I can work in the hospital like he does and help people right alongside him. Yeah. You've changed quite a bit from the uh, tooth and claw nature girl that I had three rounds with a while ago. Well, we're looking for a book about zoology, which begins with C. Find it. Z? Okay. You, uh, you kind of like Dr. Rossi, don't you? That's what I thought. Comparative zoology? Basic. Oh. Basic zoology. You really do like Dr. Rossi, don't you? He's my friend. 